Hello and welcome to the Disconnected Gamers Podcast, where we reconnect with life and gaming. And I'm about to, like, cough, and I'm trying to not. <clears throat> uh, episode 78, I am one of your hosts, Andrew, also known as J-Bond, with me, as always. Yeah, it's... It's your boy. And if you don't know, your girl knows. Are you, like, I, I, I totally thought you were about to, like, you were doing that... Look at that phone! Like, hold, I was <laughs> I like, I, I just picture, I picture you I holding your, your face sideways to a camera that's not actually there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Snapping your neck. <laughs> Look at that phone. Mm, roll on him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, episode seventy-eight. As I've said already, it is December eighth. 2016 we have what however many sleeps until christmas which is weird uh because it's like three fucking what is it three saturdays or something or two saturdays i don't even i can't do math uh here's pretty much almost over practically looking at the calendar uh one yeah two two saturdays because christmas Mm -hmm. is on sunday so sunday damn so it's like what 16 days 17 days Something like that, yeah. That sounds about right. Seventeen. It's seventeen. I did math real quick. Uh weird. Not gonna lie, it feels weird that the year is almost over. But, but, uh, but I was at the PlayStation Experience recently. I should have been there. Fucking work. I should just fuck work and went anyways. Yep. Oh well. Well, you know what? Great story. Great story. So you know Ooh. Cueva Moose. Mm-hmm. He he literally like quit his job to come to to go to PSX. Oh shit! Because <laughs> like he had bought the tickets already, and right. he had like he lives in California, so like he didn't have to travel. But like he'd bought the tickets, and I think he said he got a hotel room so that he wouldn't have to to like drive in. And wow. uh, like his job wasn't going to give him the time off, so he's like, "So I put in my two weeks." I was like, "Fuck it." <laughs> Damn. And I'm like, "Hey man, that's putting your money where your mouth is." It's true. Um, Because we, like, him and I hadn't talked in forever, but, like, we I knew he was going to be there and uh, saw him walking in one day when I was waiting in the line to get in. Nice. Which was cool. And then we, we crossed paths a little bit later in the day, so we chatted for a bit. Um, saw a bunch of the former PlayStation MVPs, now PS MVPs, because they've... Uh, hmm done their own they're spinning off and, and doing their own thing i'm a i'm a i'm gonna get in on that help out boys uh nice, nice. saw toasty stickers saw radio playstation hung out with them for a while josh nestevan hanging out nice. we took a picture with uh one of the are they watchers is that what they're called in uh horizon i the think little, the little like you oh, know, two-legged uh, t-rex looking type things yeah, T Rex yeah, yeah. like robots. That. Um, yeah, those t- we took a picture with one of those and the chick. Uh, played Horizon Zero Dawn, pretty cool though. Yeah. It's just like all the demo for like for what I could figure out was just kill shit. Like it was like kill enemies these particular ways, right? Like kill the robot things, and. It was cool and all, except I didn't actually kill any of the enemies the way that I was supposed to, because it's yeah. not. It wasn't like a tutorial. Like it didn't really show me how to do anything. It was just kind of like, "Hey, you're here, and we're gonna give you a list of things you can do, mm-hmm. but not really give you a whole lot of of tutorial." How to- yeah, and like, and in the, in the sense of like, I do hate game tutorials. Like that's a game you can't just drop me into and expect me to like know what I'm doing. Because Pick my guess up. is, right, right, right. because my guess is, when I play the first part of the game, like when it comes out, it teaches you how to do that random type of stuff. Mm. Was well, there no one like at the booth saying, "Oh, okay, oh no, well, there was tons of dudes. There were dudes okay. walking around, but like I didn't have like the opportunity to grab them." Right, right, right. Um, and they only gave you like ten minutes to play, anyways. So like basically, like they were ah. just they were just they had like I think like thirty stations, and basically they were giving everybody ten minutes, and so. Mm-hmm. They were just kind of like grabbing you at ten minutes and then putting another person in, and so like it was, it, it made it so that the game was playable, right? Like it had a relatively short yeah, yeah. line for you to wait, mm-hmm. um, because they're just churning so many people through. So it was nice to get, it was nice to get hands on. It plays well. The combat was fun, but it doesn't give me a whole lot of like what else was going on in the game. 
Because if you tried to explore anywhere, it was like if you go any further, the demo resets. Ah. Uh, but like I got a little bit of crafting, a little bit of the different types of weapons that she has in her arsenal to like throw at the robot things. Nice. Looks, this is Gorilla looks, Games, right? Uh, no. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 no? yeah. Sorry, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought, I thought it was the devs of Killzone. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's Gorilla. Or something like that. I don't know why okay. I was like, no, Gorilla, no. Um, yeah, that's Gorilla. Uh, played. I fucking dude, we played Rigs. Me, Jay Rico, so and awesome. uh, Colin, one of the, who they are PlayStation MVPs, and we played Rigs. And dude, it was awesome because like it's fun. they were like it. they were like, have you guys played this before? And like they were like, yeah, because like we have it. And I'm like, no, I've never played it. And they were like, all right, well, they, like, walked me through it and whatever. And so we're playing it. And we were up 4 nothing on the other team. And so, like, every time we were doing anything, they were like, go for the goal! Go! Go! And then it was just like, because we were the Sharks. That was the team that we played as. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, sharks! 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 So, like, I've got the headset on and all I can hear in the in the earphones is them yelling into them, like, it picking up in our mics. <laughs> And nice. we're all like, where do we go? And they're like, go in the... Because it was... Whatever this game mode was, was you get a bunch of kills as your mm -hmm. mech thing, and then you, you charge, and then you, as your charged version, have to jump through the net, and that's yep. how you get it. Yeah, so we were playing that. And we ended 4-1, and they were like, damn, this game is unstoppable. Like, they, th they said it was like a... Like, nobody had ever, like, crushed the other team like that. In which, Ooh. my apologies to the other team. Sorry. <laughs> uh, cause I, if I was the other team and I was losing and like the other, like Sony people work in the booth were like sharks, 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 oh, like I would have been, exactly. I would have been like, fuck these guys. Right. <laughs> so that Toss was, the VR headset. uh, that was hilarious. But so we won and, and the winning thing was you get like, so instead of like keeping stuff at the booth this year, they mm -hmm. would give you like vouchers and you'd go bring the voucher to like the giveaway booth. And so you had a voucher that said, like, rigs, right? And so they'd be like, oh, okay, so you did the rigs thing, you get a rigs jersey. So I got a, a nice blue jersey that says Dynamos, which I nice. assume is the other team that you play as. I think so, yeah. And uh, it's pretty dope. Uh, Farpoint, if you played Farpoint, you got the pin that I got, which I was super stoked about. And so nice. I didn't even I didn't even actually get to play Farpoint mm -hmm. again. The game was so like the line was so stacked that even when I went in, uh, right when I got to, uh, like right when I got in at like right at like ten thirty, um, mm -hmm. I ran right over and the one of the people walked by and they were like, "Yeah, so you're looking at like two to three hours right now." And I was like, <sighs> "Pass." Well, that was a right. hard, it was a hard pass for me because right. I played like I played it at PAX West and so I was just like. So I went over, played Destiny, played the new SRL races, got a uh, Union of Light emblem, which I already gave away. Anybody listening, it's already gone. Don't spam me. I it's already gone. It's gone. It's Sorry. been it's been, it's been given away. Uh, <laughs> and then I talked to Deej for a little bit because oh, I'm sense. trying to do a thing at PAX East, and so his help would be awesome. So I, I chatted with him for a little bit. But to go back to Farpoint. Me and my buddy who I actually work with here, like he also went out to PSX and we crossed paths. And so we went over to the Farpoint thing and we were like, and I saw the dude, one of the dudes in the shirt and I was like, yo, are you one of the devs? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, dude, this game fucking rocks. I was like, I played it at PAX and I was like, and I was, and I, I pulled out my phone. I was like, I love the game so much. I was like, I had them take a picture of me. I was like, it's been my Twitter profile picture ever since. And one of the other dudes turns around and he goes, do you remember me? He's like, I was the one who set you up on the headset. And I was like, holy crap, like, dude, like, <laughs> what's up? Because he, like, he yes. remembered me. And so uh, he was like, did you get the pin? And I was like, no. I was like, I couldn't, like, the line was so long. And he turns around and he just hands mm -hmm. me the voucher. And he handed yeah. me the, like, playing. And he, like, to me and my friend, he was like, you guys are good. He's like, he's like, you know, no worries, like, you know, whatever. Nice. And I was just like, fucking sweet. So I got the that's that was how I got cool. the because the far point pin is dope. It's that triangular like orange logo, like the logo uh, with the like shape the orange triangles inside of the like bigger white triangle. It's just it's a cool logo and it's a cool pin. Big ups to the dudes over at uh, Impulse Gear for hooking me up because that was that was awesome. Dope. 
Uh, Mobin's new game, uh, the one who did We Are Doomed, I was telling you about him earlier. Uh, his new game, Graceful Explosion Machine, that is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see that. It's sounds like it's going to be fun. Yeah, because it's like it's it's not quite like We Are Doomed, but like color palette wise and like kind of just the elements that are in the game are very similar. But instead of like a single screen, uh, like score based battling thing, like it's a kind of like Defender, kind of Gradius ish, where like this you just Aww. travel, you just travel left and right. But it's an okay. infinite it's an infinite loop, but like the enemies spawn, you gotta kill the enemies and you have like four different weapons you can use to attack them. I'm about that life. Yeah, it's pretty it's like it's a lot of fun. It's definitely uh, I I will give him like another shot. Right. Um Hand of Fate two was there. I was super psyched to see that. because uh, that is that's it's coming to PlayStation Four, and the first one is the first one was really good. The first one, I I still say this today, it was deceivingly good. I was not expecting it to be as good as it was when I when I tried it like a year ago, and I remember I it was at it was at PAX West, and like I saw it, and I was like, holy crap, the second one, and like the head developer, like the creative director, like heard me, and he was like, come on over, and I was like, I was like, I actually have an appointment like in five minutes. I was like, but I'm just glad to see the game is here, like the game is awesome. And he's like, do we have an appointment with you? And I was like, you don't. I was like, I'm actually, like, in a rare case. Like, I had booked myself out, not to, like, you know, brush my okay. shoulders. But, like, I would booked myself in a fashion that gave me time to go do whatever I wanted. And while I would have loved to get back and play that game, I didn't. it wasn't really in the cards. Pun, right. in pun intended, because it's a card-based RPG game. But, uh, like, I, I got to watch people playing it at PSX, and, like, it's it looks really good. Looks, I'm, I'm super excited. Looks just as good or better? Better, better. Because they've, impro like, they've improved upon the elements in the first one. So, like, nice. given that the first one was really good, like, I expect the second one to be better. Even nice. Um, I wonder or, if it's going to be a whole thing where you can jump in the second one without worrying about anything. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. The game doesn't – it's not like the story is – exists in a way that it's not like it's based on the cards that you're yeah yeah so it's like it's That's not fair, like there's yeah. uh um Somebody just wait and jump in the second one yeah i would just Although get the I, second one it was free on xbox live it so was. Actually, i think i play on that yeah i have it on xbox Live. basically like you're just building your you're, you're building the card decks playing against the dealer and then the, the rpg elements come into play based on what the cards were that you got drawn so like, right 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 you draw a card, and it's like, it's the bandits. And then it's like, you draw another card. Ah, oh, three. Fuck. Three bandits. And then you go into this mini RPG element battle zone where you, like, fight those dudes, and then you go back to the card game after oh, you. Ah, okay. Okay. So, like, each time you play, the deck is different. So you can right. have, like, a really good deck or a really bad deck. And at the end of each deck is a boss. Hmm. And, like, as you play through and level up your stuff and your deck, you're kind of stat. You can customize it so that you're, like just constantly battling enemies or in theory, like however you really want. I just always randomized it. Right. Um, Cause I thought it was more fun to me that way. But the second one adds, the second one adds companion. So like you can have like a, I don't know if it's like a f buddy in the sense of like another player or it's an, it's an AI person to help you. Uh, right. Like a, yeah. So, which it, which then makes me think that the game got more difficult, which is also equally acceptable. I'm cool with that. Sounds good. Yep. I'll definitely check out the first one. Yeah. Like I said, it sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's on PS4, Steam, yeah. Xbox One, and, and it'll be on all three. Nice. The second one will be on all three as well. So there's that. Um... That was cool. I was excited to see that. I stopped by the Double Fine booth to see my buddy Spaff. Uh, they had... What did they have? They had the... Was it Full Throttle? They had... Um, the Psychonauts VR. Knights and Bikes was there, which was fun. That's an indie game that they're publishing. They had, I think they had something else. Everything, which is another game that they are publishing, was like a booth away, which was cool to see. Um, nice. I saw that at PAX East earlier this year. I'm trying to think, Uncharted Survival Mode that was cool. Big fan. Brings Can't it. Wait. It. I think. I yeah. I think it's. It'll at least revitalize the game a bit for me because 
it'll give me something to to get other people to join in with it, right? Because like for anyone who didn't particularly like the multiplayer because it wasn't Uncharted Three and it wasn't The Last of Us, like this at least changes the game where it's not quite the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. It's hard too. Like it's Survivor's the horde to... mode, isn't it? Yeah, basically. Like yeah. the co-op horde mode. Yeah, okay. you fight like okay. in the demo. We fought ten waves, and the final wave was a boss. Mm. I'm and all like, about that life. And then in between, like, you can go to the arsenal and buy more stuff. Buy more stuff. Yeah, guns, ammo, if you want to change. Mysticals. Uh, okay, Gren- I'm about like, that life. Grenades recharge super slow, but you, uh, can just, you can just go run to the arsenal and buy grenades, and the grenades stack. So whereas, like, in multiplayer, normally you could have a maximum of two. two. In this, I had, like, four grenades because I just bought a ton. Oh, damn. Yeah. So, like, that part's cool. Nice. So, that was fun to play. Uh, I'm trying to think what else was, like, super awesome. Like, dude, I'm still still psyched, but, like, I need a PSVR because I need rigs and Farpoint. But since Farpoint's not out yet, I'm just going to wait a little bit. Just wait, yeah. yeah. I'm sure there'll be some kind of bundle or something. Yeah, well, because it's going to have the gun, too. So, like, or at least it, it would have to have the gun. It's the only thing I know at this point that uses it. Right. So, I would think. Shoot, we need to pick up rigs. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn looks really cool. I will probably pick that up. Um, they had The Last Guardian playable, which myself and a few other people were talking about this, and they were like, the next time they do PSX, if it happens to be upon a major launch of a game, like, because The Last Guardian came out two days later, right? Like, yep. they should just mm-hmm. sell the game early at PSX. Right. Like right. Think yeah. of think of how much bigger a draw that would have been if they could have oh, been yeah. like if they a surprise announced and been like, oh, by the way, if you're at PSX, you can buy the Last Guardian today. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. then everybody who didn't go would have been like, oh, I could have had it sooner. <laughs> mm-hmm. Considering even as it was, the secret panels that they announced were for the new Uncharted game and the Last of Us Part Two. Yep. They fucked up on the signings though. There was a really like huge amount of miscommunication on the damn signings. Cause I'm pissed. I wanted to meet Hideo. Fuck it. I didn't even want to necessarily have him sign anything. I would have just liked to shake his hand. Yeah, exactly, right? Like the dude's ma- the dude's a friggin' legend. Mm-hmm. So Thank you for Metal Gear. Right? My boy says thank you for Metal Gear. <laughs> exactly. Uh my boy said thank you for hustling for the Lord when you made MGS. <laughs> Uh, he would have been like, "What? <laughs> what?" But if he as like his translator, pounds, as if he his pounds tra- it, then as he his, knows. As his translators like translating that, right? Yeah. Just he just throws up the deuces. Uh, right. <laughs> yes, because it was cool. Like that part was a bummer. Like not getting to to meet Hideo. Um, right. But I got to i I got to talk to Jeff Keeley for a minute. Nice. Kind of made a fool. Like I kind of like, and this is the like this is the fun part where I, t- I tell the story, and I'm only gonna tell a portion of it. Like I I kind of insulted him like accidentally, and then oh. like and then he was just like thanks, and I was like hey man, and then I just kind of like walked away being like well that was stupid, like and <laughs> at like after the th- after the fact I was kind of like yeah, I... whoops. Because I was just being real with him, and then I like realized after the fact that like maybe being real with him kind of sort of was like not, not intentionally, idea, yeah. but like I wasn't intentionally being mean, but I think it might have possibly been it, received that way. It came off that way, yeah. Yeah. So whatevs. Um. I guess I can show the blue. Yeah. The funny thing was, was like everyone that like when I was telling people the story after the fact, they were all like, "Good for you, man!" Like sometimes people need to have need to hear hear stuff like that. And I'm like, I wasn't trying to be mean though. Like nothing. Right? Not, yeah. It's like nothing was intentional. Yeah. So I thought like that made me chuckle at le- the least because they were like, and one person was just like, "Dude, the like he's heard way worse things. Like that wasn't mean. That was you just like having an opinion <laughs> on something." And I was like, "I suppose." Mm. Uh. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I saw a bunch. I saw a bunch of other people that I know in the gaming industry that was cool. Um, saw Hassan Oops. from Twitch. Saw a bunch of the MVPs. Saw some friends at Naughty Dog. 
Um, saw, oh, saw Caesar from We the Force because Randall was being demoed at PSX again, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the he's the one with the devs in uh, Mexico, Oops. and so it's uh, really cool to see the progress on that. He's got they've got two games out. One called well, not out yet, but two games in progress. One called Randall, the other one called Kim the Avenger Cow. Um, both like super super fun little games, and uh, it was it was really awesome to see that uh, they got to come out to PSX and and show off their game. Nice. Uh, I'm trying to think. Who else did I see? I saw Zach from who uh, worked at PlayStation. Saw Justin, the social media guy, Mazignoli, Mazigna, whatever. His Twitter is Jutsen. I think that's his PSN as well. I think I follow him. Yeah, I do. I definitely do. Um, it sounds familiar. I'm trying to think who else did I see that like I didn't know there was gonna Oh Aaron from Sony Santa Monica. Nice. Yep. Uh Talk... Tank, right? Yep, just Tank, yeah. Exactly. Nice. Bingo. Yeah, he was there. I'm trying to think. I don't know, man. It's like like I love PSX because it's like everybody's there for the same reason and it's not quite as crazy as PAX. Mm-hmm. However, it's a it's super a little bit smaller. Yeah, exactly. Inch-ish. Except except smaller but i think they like here 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 are my criticisms of playstation experience one this is your this was your second one right yes yeah i was in san fran and then here i never i didn't go to vegas so i don't know what vegas was like but like the venue kind of a poor choice didn't really seem like it was super set up or that maybe they just didn't get enough space like because that mm. convention center was massive like there were three other things going on at the same time as psx like in different uh, halls so like there's right. there's potential that there could have been more space allotted but um they couldn't secure all of it no but i guess is they just didn't they just you know it's not like they didn't have the money fair yeah because there's only two day events so um i guess they would have needed all that space for two days <laughs> so I think it could have been a little bit bigger in terms of uh, space because and and or they sold too many badges like it's one or the other. Like they either needed more space because they sold too many badges or they sold more badges than they thought they were going to. Because right. I got in line at 930 to which isn't really enough space when uh, you consider the fact that the thing opened at 10 a.m. Like, I should have gotten in line earlier. However, getting in line at 9.30, I literally watched the entire keynote outside. And there were also people that got in line and had been in line longer than me waiting to pick mm-hmm. up their badge to then get in the line that I was in to get into the expo hall. Damn. So, like, I watched that whole hour-long keynote from outside and then got in. I think I got into PAX, or PSX, rather, at, like, 11.30. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Like and and just to put just to put this up as an example, Adam Boys, I tweeted mm-hmm. a picture of him waiting in the line to get his badge. <laughs> wow. Like I was out in line in with my badge and I I look over and I'm like, "Adam, what are you doing?" He's like, "I'm waiting to get my badge." I was like, "Why? Like you literally <laughs> used to run this place. You work next to Shuhei. Like why mm-hmm. do you not have the ability to like get and Nope. He was uh, waiting in line to pick right. up his badge. No so fast like, pass for yeah, former exactly. employees. Yeah, so he uh, <laughs> he also watched the keynote outside. Wow, that sucks. Right? I mean, at least it was, like, nice out and, like, you know, you're hanging out with the people in the line, but... Oh, like, no, yeah, yeah. My, th- totally my cool. whole thing is, fuck it, let me go into the expo hall then and play games. Like, let me get in yeah. line to play games if you're not going to let me sit and watch the keynote. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think that was kind of a, like the whole, and the whole line management thing was kind of really awful to begin with too, because there were like a bunch of dudes with suits and I'm like, where's the line if I have my badge? And they're like, oh, it's this line, which he could have been like, it wraps all the way around. So save yourself the 10 minutes and just walk over there, like walk Mm -hmm. to my left rather than walk all the way down and around to go like the same distance that you could have just walking to your left. Right. Meanwhile, alongside that line was the line for people waiting to get their badge. 
which a ton of people were waiting in my line who didn't have their badge. And I'm like, yo, this is the badge line. And they're like, no, they told me this is the no badge line. And I'm like, they told me this is the badge line. And after like asking four different dudes, we finally determined that I was correct. This was the badge line. And then he, and then, so he'd been waiting in that line could have been like a half hour. Now he's going to go stand in another line. Oh, like I'd have been ouch. pissed. I'd have been real pissed. Right? Like, damn. So the one thing I don't like about some conventions. Yeah, like the line management was just piss poor. Yeah, like man, like, yeah, it's usually line management is terrible. So and it's just a lot of people yelling at you. Right. So in that sense, uh, they could have done a better job. I think on the whole, like big ticket games, like the VR stuff, Far Point, Last Guardian, Horizon Zero Dawn, GT Sport, like. Why do you not have extra booth? Like, why do you not have extra units for this? Like, Farpoint's booth was massive, and they could have easily had like two or three more VR stations, which would have just made it go a little bit faster. faster. And like, I'm not, I'm not asking for a lot too, because like they had the space in their existing booth, and mm-hmm. like I get that like they had that big rocky wall and they had the big spider, they had the big spider model and. Like oh yeah, you know, some displays. people taking people taking photos and stuff like could have easily fit at least another two units in there, right? It's a TV and a VR headset, yeah. Like and a dev kit PS4. Like Sony could have easily got two more units, which would have just been like a little bit would have sped it up just a little bit more. And especially when you like when you look at they had to know how much the demand was to play those games in VR. At exactly. PAX West, like they could have just been like, we need this many units now, and right? Just because so many They'll people wanted that, like the demand was so high at a different place, we just need to increase. You know, like what's the worst thing that happens if the line is so short, people play it twice? Yeah, right. So I, that's like on on things like that. It's kind of a bummer that they don't have like just a bazillion stations for certain games. Mm-hmm. Um. Because like spa- like space wise in that sense like there were booths that did not quite use their full potential like even Horizon Zero Dawn in my opinion was kind of like tucked away in the back like it was behind mm. the main theater stage in like a mm. corner where you wouldn't really have known where it was and like it was Horizon really? Zero Dawn GT Sport Drawn to Death The Last Guardian and then like one of the food stand places and then you would have had to walk around the main stage to get back to like where the main area of all the other like games were. Hmm. That's weird considering that's one of the bigger games. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. I mean it's it's one of those things where like I feel like because it's Sony's like I didn't feel like I ever had to wait at all at PSX when it was in San Fran. And, like, mm. the Capcom Cup was in a separate area, like, was in the same area as the main stage and all that stuff. Like, um, like I think that the, the Moscone Center in San Fran was just a better fit in personal opinion. But um, I just think that it's one of those things where, like, I feel like for PlayStation Experience, I shouldn't have to wait to, to check anything out. Like, not – I shouldn't have to wait more than an hour. Like, that's – Right. It's, it's only two days – and granted, it was open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. the first day. Mm-hmm. It's 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. the second day. So, like, you're you're not talking a ton of hours if you have to put three hours mm-hmm. into playing Farpoint. Right, yeah. Because like, uh, you're wasting almost most of the time just to right. play one game. You know, whereas, like, I waited in line maybe 10 minutes to play Horizon. and. Really? the horizon demo was like 10 minutes. Right. And then I could have easily mm-hmm. been like, hmm, I want to go back in and it wouldn't have been a big deal to play that again. You know? Right. Yeah. Like I waited mm-hmm. probably like 15 or 20 minutes to play Parappa the rapper and then fucking crash bandicoot. Oh, like it was fun, but it was like, it was totally fine. I would wait in that line to play that game because it was a super short demo. It was just a lot right. of people wanted to play it. So they were cranking them out. They had four stations. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, I don't know. I, it, on you know, I don't. I don't remember having to really wait to play games at PSX in San Fran. And I definitely there were games. I just was like, you know what? There's no reason to wait in this line to play it. Like people, right, yeah. people were saying like, why wait in line to play The Last Guardian? You'll be able to play it in two days. You know, yeah, but like days, some yeah. people were like, but if I haven't, 
if I'm not committed to buying the game, like this gives me an opportunity to try it out. Try it out, yeah. Just do you want to wait that long to play it though? Right. Um, and given that, like, uh, you know about the cards, right? That they give out. Yeah. yeah. Like the playing, the play, yeah, the, the collectible yeah. playing cards. Like, yeah, yeah. A ton of people were like, "You have to play the game to get the card," and I'm like, "Okay, that makes sense." But last yeah. year at the Moscone Center, they literally had little kiosks at every booth, and you would go up and scan your badge, and that was how it checked off that you'd been there. This year, most of the people would only scan your badge if you had done, if you had played the game. Hmm. So, like, I went over to the Horizon booth and was like, oh, like, are you guys scanning? And they're like, yeah, you just have to go take a picture with the thing. And I'm like, okay. So I went over, took a picture with the damn thing, and then was like, okay, scan my fucking badge. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you had to, if you hit, Ugh. if so, to get the uh, to get the Platinum Trophy card, you had mm-hmm. to play 20 different games. So you had to go get scanned at 20 different places, attend one panel, so you have to get scanned for attending the panel, attend one signing, which right. that was the biggest pain in the oh. ass because given the Hideo Kojima line mess up and the fact that they were capping the lines, you literally only had 45 minutes to be in the, like, there's only 45 minutes of the signing existing for you to get into it and get signed anyways. Ugh. And then attend Capcom Cup, which thankfully I went over when the Capcom Cup was being, was on and was like, oh, is this the Capcom Cup? I'm so excited. Like, do you, oh, you're doing the scans? Boop. And then I literally turned around and walked away. <laughs> uh, but the signing, like the signing thing, I literally waited in line for like an hour to get a picture because like Greg, Gre- the kind of funny one was just a picture. And so like I mm-hmm. waited in line to then wait in the line to get the picture with him. And like Greg was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I need my, <laughs> I need my badge right? scanned. And he was like, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Uh, like I hate you. <laughs> so I took a picture with Greg, Tim, and Colin, and it's on a Facebook page somewhere. I gotta find it. Nice. Um, and That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, that was how I got my badge scanned. Allegedly, if you'd gone to the help desk and told them that like you couldn't get into a signing, they would sw- they would scan your badge so that you could get checked off. Because it was right. st- that's super unfair. Because you're now telling people like, no, hey, yeah. you may be waiting for three hours in line to play Farpoint because you really want to play Farpoint, but if you want a fucking collectible card just to have it you have to go attend a signing that might even that might be for somebody you don't want to meet like let's be real you might not want to meet Hideo Kojima or Tim Schafer or the kind of funny guys or the you know Laura Bailey and uh Chloe and because I don't know what her name is in real life or you know Troy Baker like maybe you don't want to meet those people true you know, maybe you want you don't want to meet David Jaffe I don't know those are all cool people I would be thrilled to meet any of them but mm-hmm. like maybe you're maybe that's not your thing. So like now you can't get the platinum trophy card. You can't get the ten dollar voucher. Like just all these things that are all tied to that. The bad yeah, scanning thing. Like it's a little bit of a pain in the ass because like everyone that was in the line with me to do the kind of funny one, they were literally like, "I just want my fucking badge scanned." Like to the point where they were like, "Oh man, to make this go easier, let seven of us get in a picture with Greg and the guys just so that the pic like we're all we're all done quicker." Yeah, and right. I'm like, so these are people literally taking spaces from other people who may genuinely have never met and Actually want to meet me, yeah. these people, just because they want to get their badge scanned so they can get the card or get the ten dollar voucher. Like, I mean, I also think it's a little un. Uh, it was a little kind of ridiculous for people to be like, "We'll only scan your badge if you play the game," because some of the lines were crazy, and it's like, I want. I want to have 20 scans so that I can complete a thing, which makes it kind of like a witch hunt. But at the same time, like, uh, right. I, just, I would just look at them and be like, I'm not standing in that line just to get my card scanned. Like, just right. scan it. Like, and, and no just offense. Scan. Like if you're not going to tell people you get five minutes, 10 minutes with the game and bump them after 10 minutes, there's no incentive for me to wait in this line because it could be an hour or two. Mm-hmm. Like if you're yeah, not, if you're not yeah, if you're not letting them play for 10 minutes, so I know that, okay, 10, and then I like start counting in the line, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay. So I'm in for an hour. Like, you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's a bit tough. It's a bit, a bit tough. aggravating. Um, however, uh, many of the developers were, if you got your badge scanned, giving away free games. Now, Adult uh, Adult Swim Games literally was like, if you come by and get scanned, and they had a little badge scanning station, you got Headlander for free. Damn. 
Go to Double Fine, get scanned, you get Day of the Tentacle. My buddy Mobine had a uh, graceful explosion machine, and if you scan that, you got his first game, We Are Doomed. To which he was like, you have this game. And I was like, I know, but I need to hit 20 scans. Uh, and, 20 then scans I, and then yeah. my friends at Double Fine hooked me up with like 12 more scans for free. For the price of on the, <laughs> on house, the house, aka testing a theory that if I just scanned at the same place twenty times would it count, and I think it did. I think it counted because I scanned it like ten times, then scanned one more somewhere else. And it was like, Bing, you've hit twenty places, and I was like, sweet. Oh yeah, you did, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, that platinum trophy card is mine. I don't. Did even, you get oh, the card? By the yeah. Way, oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I went and got the okay, cards. I don't right, have right, the. Right. I don't have the full deck of either. San Francisco PSX or this PSX, but I got a bunch. Like, oh, man, one of them was hilarious. I was walking by, like, the Call of Duty booth, and they were mm -hmm. like, oh, hey, do you want to meet some, like, pro players? And I was like, uh, do I get a scan nah. for it? I was like, do I get a scan for it? She's like, yeah, 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 and you, we, we have, you know, cards. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, why the hell not? So I get in, I get scanned, she gives me a card, then I get, I'm in the line waiting, right? And it, I think it was FaZe Clan that signed a Call of Duty poster for me. Like, I don't even know. Literally don't even know who these dudes were. But they're pro players. And, like, for, like, two hours a day, they had a couple different guys signing. Hmm. So at the end of the line, I get another scan and a different Call of Duty card. Like, one was the Modern Warfare Remaster card. The other one was Infinite Warfare. So I got two cards for, like, literally five minutes of waiting. The dude signed the poster. <laughs> I talked to him for a few minutes. I walked away and was like, cool, I could throw this poster out, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right, yeah. You like, I literally was, I was, like, in the line, and, and, like, the first dude was a lefty, and I was like, nice, left-handed, sweet, I'm a lefty, too. I was like, fuck these other guys on your team, though. They're righties. We don't like them. Uh, <laughs> and that was, like, literally it. That was, like, the whole conversation, because I was like, I have no right. idea. I have no idea who any of you are. I get that you're pro players. You're clearly right. doing well cool. for yourself. You're sponsored. You're here. You're doing a signing like. Right. Cool. You're talented. I was straight up just cool. that poster. Someone. Straight up just. Look. I know the poster's sitting on the floor in my room. Uh, oh, shit. Like, yo, you I, want like, a poster? Because I, I felt, I felt Fuck bad. Fuck like, off. I didn't want to just throw it away. And then at the at the end of the show, we were, like, walking by the booth, booth and they were like, hey, do you guys want some posters? And I was like, no, I do not. Because you just don't want to ship. You don't want to ship it home or throw it out. <laughs> um, right. but yeah so i got i got all the trophy cards like bronze gold silver bronze silver gold platinum and yes. then i got uh the far point one which is awesome they were out of horizon zero dawn ones which was a bummer because yeah. i was kind of hoping for that uh yeah a couple and a couple <laughs> of the indie games had cards which is cool so like i went and checked those out to get those but like I wasn't trying to get the full deck because realistically it's kind of impossible. Like it's just there's too many. Right. Not enough hours in the day. And given that the people at uh Farpoint hooked me up, like I never would have got that one. Damn. I would never I would have never had the time to, to invest in the line, you know? That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Uh but I mean but overall I, like it's a good show to go to if you don't want to do packs or like you're closer to PSX than you are to packs. I hope it's not in the Anaheim Convention Center again. I really do hope it's back in San Francisco. I just think that that was a a good fit. Mm. But that said, uh it was cool to go see everybody um you know see friends that don't necessarily partake in the gaming industry saw, saw one of my lady friends that lives out there oh she mm -hmm. um and you know just just hang out for two days it was nice to get away yeah. it was nice to get away from home i hated coming back because it was free it's freezing cold in comparison oh, yeah. not a fan hate the weather. but uh i mean i do encourage anyone listening uh if you haven't been to any of the PlayStation experiences, like go, like if you if you're a fan of PAX or you're a fan of those types of conventions at all, like it's just a ton of PlayStation games and a ton of people who are cool and a ton of people who want to play games like you. Like, you'll make friends out of it for sure. Um, just go experience it. Yeah, exactly. Like experience PlayStation experience, which is weird, but uh, <laughs> like it's it's to me to me I think it's worth it. Like I don't think there's a reason not to go because no, of, yeah, because of the cool yeah. stuff that gets announced. Like 
The Last of Us Part Two being announced, that Uncharted side story thing being announced, like that's awesome. I went to the Hideo Kojima panel where he talked about Death Stranding. Um, <clears throat> no one understands it, and like he didn't answer a single question that we asked him. But hey, whatever. Uh, he just kind of dodged them. Uh, he probably can't. Yeah, I mean, it's his yeah, damn he probably... game. He can say whatever he wants. He probably doesn't <laughs> want to give anything away, though. Even though the actors don't understand the game. Right. Yeah, he's like, that's a whole he, he that's played, a whole other conversation. He played the tra- the second trailer with a different song and he said, "Listen to the song with the way that it's hitting the video." He's like, "And it'll take on a slightly different meaning." And I'm like, "I still doesn't quite hit." Stop However, he did say he did say that the two videos are connected, like how the baby jumps between the two of them. Mm. Um, which was weird weird it's, it's super kojima. it's super yeah exactly it's kojima it's, that, that's all you have to say it's kojima um so yeah so yeah that was that was kind of it that was all i i wanted to talk about playstation experience um you know got got a couple sleeps I, till christmas coming i on. wanted to hear about it yeah I, I i'm really bummed you couldn't go and there was a couple other people that i wanted to go that couldn't go and it was like you work <sighs> yeah could have just pulled. You could have pulled a huevo moose and been like, you know what? Fuck it. Here's my two weeks, bitch. Nah, nah, nah. I need my job. I need my job. Yeah. To be fair, he had another job line. Like, I in say, the yeah. Way. He's he, he probably had something lined up. He had a. He had a. He's an internship. Uh, that's like very pursuant to what his career aspirations are. So he was like, I can, you know, fuck this. Fuck right. This can handle. Yeah. Fuck situation. this situation. Yeah. Going to PSX. Um. Yeah, so anyways. I'll try, I'll try Pack South. Yeah, I might I'm gonna legitimately try for Pack South too. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but Right. It's, it's a maybe. It's, it's a maybe we'll at talk the moment. About it. Talk about um because I, I may just not go as like I may not even because I think it's too late to like try for media or anything like that. Like I may just maybe get a ticket and just go. Like just to hang out. Right. Because I think that's what we might do. Yeah. Um, like even if it's just for like a day, because we don't live that far away, so Oh, that seems like a long drive for just a day, though. Oh, we'll probably hang out. Like, like we'll probably stay there for the weekend, but just go to Pax for like a day. And oh, just, oh, oh, for one. Yeah, day. just kind of yeah, 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 hang out for the yeah, hang out for the weekend. I got you man. for the rest of the weekend. Makes sense for a whole weekend. Um, yeah. So that was that's kind of it. Um, as always, you can find us on the internet. Uh, mm-hmm. I am on the Twitters at so after I said, as well as various other social media platforms, also at so after I said. Uh, Mike on Twitter at mtong one. Uh, the podcast Twitter is at the DG Cast. We have a YouTube. I don't post much to it, but I'm trying to get better at that. Uh, this has been episode seventy-eight <laughs> of the <laughs> Disney Connected Gamers podcast. <laughs> And we will catch you on the flip.